Hi, my name is Eric. Welcome back to my channel. Let's talk once again about Lana Del Rey. She just released her brand new album, Chemtrails Over the Country Club, and I am here to give it my first reaction and to break down the album's lyrics. As you might know if you've seen some of my other videos, Lana is one of my favorite artists, and NFR in particular is one of my favorite albums in recent years, so I'm so excited to listen to this album for the first time. Also, I've done a couple videos ranking all of Lana's songs, both before and after NFR came out, so I think I will have to do an updated version of that video after I've listened to Chemtrails a few more times, so keep an eye out for that. Before I dive in, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite song from this album is. Check the description box for a link to a list of nonprofits you can donate to. Please subscribe to be here when I post new videos every week, and hit the bell icon to be notified when my videos go live. Without further ado, track number one is White Dress. Wow. That without a doubt is one of Lana's most beautiful songs, like up there with Shades of Cool, just in terms of pure beauty, the melody was amazing, her vocal performance was a little bit unconventional, and I like some of the decisions that she made on this song because they weren't so straightforward. She was very breathy in places, which to me conveyed a sort of excitement, a sort of breathlessness over this intense feeling of nostalgia and longing, um, the weird rhythm when she talked about going to the music conference in Orlando was, again, something that brings to mind the unconventional choices from NFR on a song like Bartender that made the songs more unique. And this might seem kind of backwards, but having already heard the title track, something that I'm feeling is a common thread already is this question of, what happens when the stage lights are off, when the party's over, when someone who has lived their dream is coming down from that high and has to contend with these competing parts of their identity? Because on this song, Lana's voice is reminiscing on two very different parts of her past, one where she was a working class woman living the simple life, and another where she was a young singer breaking into the music business. And the central symbol that she attaches to her working class life is the white dress, which of course is a sound pun on waitress, but I think it also has another two meanings. First, the archetypal white dress is a wedding dress, so she associates this working class life and being a waitress with being in love. And second, the white color of a wedding dress actually represents purity, which is why the tradition is to wear an off-white dress if you are remarrying. So Lana is implying here that back then is when life was pure and simple. Later she talks about listening to the white stripes when they were white hot, listening to rock all day long. Just like the purity of her simple life faded, and just like the popularity of rock as a genre faded, the pure white heat of stardom fades too. And then she says, summer's almost gone. The end of summer in music often represents the end of youthful innocence or a sort of summer love. You can think of songs like Summer's End by John Prine or Autumn by Joanna Newsom or August by Taylor Swift. And then Lana's nostalgia for this simpler time leads her to say that just talking with her lover about life made her feel not only in control, but like a god. 
So there's this very clear conceptual rift between the conventional idea of stardom as something celestial and unattainable just like God and the idea that Lana has of the simple life as being holy and godly. And I already know that she's going to go into more detail about this on track number two, the title track, Chemtrails Over the Country Club. I'm on the run with you, my sweet love, and play the chemtrails over the country club. Take out your turquoise and all of your jewels. My mom's in Leo, my cancer is Absolutely incredible. Definitely one of my favorite songs of the year so far. Plus the way that the song gradually builds and that soaring chorus is just so, so beautiful. And like I said before, Lana's voice on this album is caught between some different worlds. And on this song, she explores a few of those. On the first verse, Lana says, take out your turquoise and all of your jewels, go to the market, the kids swimming pools. To me, this is Superstar Lana basically returning to Earth, taking off her jewelry and just going about doing mundane sort of domestic things. And another element that shows up is this idea of childhood, because one of the ways that Lana returns to the simpler life is by going to the kids' swimming pools. Also on the second verse, she talks about getting coffee at the elementary school and sort of slips into this childlike way of speaking when she says, you won't play, you're no fun. And later she reminisces on when we were kids under chemtrails and country clubs. And I feel the need to point out that if you grew up under a country club, maybe you felt like the country club lifestyle was above you. Maybe you didn't grow up with that amount of wealth. So just like she associated the simple life with youthful innocence on white dress, maybe she's telling us that she is returning or even regressing to that life here by embracing these childlike ideas. To me, this song exists right between the world of old money and how to disappear, because on old money, she talked about red racing cars as a symbol of luxury, but specifically a type of fortune that couldn't buy happiness. And here she talks about drag racing her little red sports car. She still got this attraction to moneyed eccentricity, because we see her also wearing her jewels in the swimming pool. We also get this from the way she says, normality settles down over me. Something that comes over you like a wave usually is something that exerts power over you. And settle is a clever word choice here because maybe on some level Lana feels like settling down also involves settling for something less instead of something greater that she wanted so badly on white dress. She used to feel like a god, but now she feels this power coming over her. And because of that, she wants to push back and assert herself, so she ends up being caught between the terrestrial world and the celestial world. She brings up chemtrails, which are a conspiracy theory, something not grounded in reality. She brings up God, who by nature is supernatural. And she brings up astrology, which of course is generally regarded as a pseudoscience, but also maybe is a way of reconnecting with her inner star. Also, just as an aside, she's a Cancer, which is a water sign, which might explain why she spends so much time in and around water on this song. Lana's attraction to the unexplained and the supernatural and arguably the irrational 
stems from, I think, her persistent desire for something greater, something more. She wants to feel like a god. She wants to have control over her life. And conspiracy theories, religion, and astrology, to very different degrees, are different ways that we structure our understanding of our lives. But I think this also connects to gender and why I think Lana has chosen this 1950s suburban aesthetic. Lana says that she is nobody's son and nobody's daughter. She is anonymous, but also free of gender boundaries. But gender anarchy wasn't exactly in vogue in the 1950s. The 50s in general were a period of economic prosperity following the strife of World War II, and to a lot of people, that decade represents the peak of domesticity, the rise of the housewife, and by extension, a rise in mental illness among women and the overmedication of women. A particularly insidious gendered psychiatric idea that prevailed in the 50s and that still has reverberations today was hysteria, which was treated with anything from pills to lobotomies to institutionalizations, just like Lana's upcoming poetry book, Behind the Iron Gates, Insights from an Institution. And while I may be oversimplifying, a lot of historians link the social conditions that gave rise to domesticity with the reasons that women were often treated as clinically insane or more generally irrational. So then when Lana insists directly that she is not unhinged, she's asserting her right not to fit into any one box or to conform to any particular expectations. She can be both a suburban domestic and a wild woman who goes out drag racing. She can be both a grounded person and a star in touch with the cosmos. Just like her Twitter bio says, she contains multitudes. Track number three is Tulsa Jesus Freak. You should stay real close to Jesus. Wow, oh, that was so good. I love the use of vocoder on the song. Oh my gosh. I like that she said Arkansas. It might have been a pun on like our Kansas, like our old stomping ground sort of, but um, either way it was funny. And again, Lana is returning to a simpler life in the Bible Belt, sort of the epicenter of Christianity and traditional values in the US. Lana opens the song by telling her lover to stay close to Jesus, to keep a bottle in his hand, and to find his way back to her bed. And I guess you could say that these are three types of intoxication. Of course, literal drunkenness, but also maybe the intoxicating qualities of religious dogma and of romance. And once again, a return to the simple life is a return to holiness, this time to Jesus, who is the earthly, I guess, humbler embodiment of God. And there's a big contrast between the suburban life of the title track and rural life here in Arkansas, except Tulsa's in Oklahoma, so I guess maybe just the Deep South in general. She says, down in Arkansas, the stores are all closed, the kids in their hoodies, they dance super slow, white hot forever, which was supposed to be the title of the album, I think, until she changed it to Chemtrails. This neighborhood is economically depressed, but just like the white stripes on the opener, it still burns white hot. Obviously in a very different way though, this town to Lana, this simple downtrodden neighborhood, burns with the sort of simplicity and love and holiness that Lana didn't know she needed when she abandoned the small town for the stage. 
and she once again says, no more candle in the wind, just like on Mariner's apartment complex. A candle in the wind is a white hot light that can be snuffed out, just like Marilyn Monroe, who Elton John originally wrote Candle in the Wind about, or Princess Diana, who he later dedicated it to. And it's also worth mentioning that Lana associates her partner on this song and the last song with the wind, which of course blows out a candle. But of course, Lana doesn't want to burn out. She doesn't want to go up in flames and be left with ash. She wants to keep burning. Track number four is the second of the two songs from this album that I've heard before, Let Me Love You Like a Woman. I come from a small town, how about you? Because I'm ready to leave LA and I want you to come. I don't care where. Really beautiful, as usual. This was the first song released from this album as a single. I love the harmonies, I love the melody. The bridge, of course, is beautiful. Lana just consistently writes very beautiful bridges. And of course, if you wanted more of her crystal clear upper register compared to the intentional breathiness of the opener, she for sure delivers on that here. Lyrically, the situation on this song is pretty much the same. Lana is living in LA and she's tired of it and wants to return to that small town lifestyle. The question that the song raises then is what exactly it means to love like a woman. And on the chorus, Lana says, let me love you like a woman, let me hold you like a baby, let me shine like a diamond. So first to Lana, loving like a woman means being maternal and comforting. But also knowing the significance of youth to Lana from the first couple tracks, this also means being able to bring back the holy simplicity of young love, which was also connected to being in control like a mother over a child. And then shining like a diamond is a bit more straightforward. She wants to feel beautiful and valuable. She likes to be seen by men professionally, and she wants to feel seen by the man in her life. These are pretty conventional conceptions of womanhood, just like the suburban housewife elements of chemtrails, but Lana's particular expression and experience of them is empowering to her. Track number five is Wild at Heart. What would you do if I told you you made me crazy to see your pretty pics on Sunset Boulevard? I love you lots like polka dots you're killing me more than coffee pots and instant pots. I was baby. Cameras have flashes, they cause the car crashes, but I'm not a star. 
That was so good. Oh my gosh, definitely an album highlight for me. I love the change of pace around the one third mark of the song. I love that it is so folk leaning and acoustic. I am a big fan of folk music. And so I just love the direction that Lana has taken with this album. So to convey her feelings about LA, Lana carries over this burning motif when she says, I left Calabasas, escaped all the ashes. The Santa Monica Mountains where Calabasas is located are notorious for wildfires, particularly the 2018 Woolsey Fire, which inspired not only the cover of NFR, but also the song The Greatest, where Lana says, LA's in flames, it's getting hot. Just like stars who burn white hot, Calabasas, one of the most sought after well-off areas in LA, also burns and leaves ash. The luxury and the status are fleeting. And then Lana says, the cameras have flashes, they cause car crashes. Lana wants to shine forever, not flash and disappear. She wants to race her red sports car, not crash. She also says that walking around on Sunset Boulevard inspires her to smoke cigarettes. Maybe cigarettes are something that are pleasurable for a moment and then burn out. Instead, she chooses to be in the dark to be anonymous rather than in the spotlight. This lifestyle is just not sustainable. LA goes up in flames and leaves ash, but the simple life burns white hot forever. Track number six is Dark But Just A Game. It's dark but just a game That's what he would say to me The faces aren't the same But their stories all end tragically Sweet I'm so impressed by this album. I love the stylistic decisions on this song, the switching of the beats and the instrumentation, and I think key changes too, so sophisticated. Also, I think the choice on this song to split the song very distinctly between two different styles also captures the way that Lana has felt caught between two different worlds throughout the album. It's these different dichotomies and these splits that she performs musically here. But whereas these last few songs were very specific about their images and situations, this song feels intentionally vague for a few different reasons. Lana's describing the music industry and says that she was treated like a pretty little thing, a pretty little fool. And then on the first verse, she's talking about other people and says, the faces aren't the same, but their stories all end tragically. This is just gesturing at something vaguely, but it all revolves around objectification and anonymity. When Lana talked about entering the dark on Wild at Heart, she was talking about becoming anonymous and leaving the spotlight and no longer being a star. So by defining this game, this music industry, as dark, I think she's implying that it takes away artists' individuality. On the second verse, Solana says, no rose left on the vines, don't even want what's mine, because what's left when the roses are gone other than thorns? All pain, no gain. And then when she says, it's dark but just a game, so play it like a symphony, it's a pun on the word play, because of course play can mean to perform music, but it can also mean to play a game, to manipulate people's emotions. And this pun tells us that in the industry, these things are inseparable. To get to play your music, you have to play the game, and Lana doesn't want to play anymore. Track number seven is Not All Who Wander Are Lost. I've been wearing the same damn clothes for three damn days. The thing about men like you is you've got a lot to say, but will you stay? Opening up doors, pulling out just look at you. I think you know the same secrets that I do.
Wow, oh my gosh, so beautiful. I am sitting around the campfire, thinking back on old memories and friends, and it's so wistful and beautiful. I love that she went in the folk direction on this album. I think it suits her perfectly. We saw that from some of her early songs, um, maybe that weren't necessarily released, like All You Need or Never Let Me Go. And I found the full quote where the title of the song comes from. It's of course J.R.R. Tolkien who wrote The Lord of the Rings. And this is from The Fellowship of the Ring in a poem that says, all that is gold does not glitter, not all those who wander are lost. And even though she doesn't actually say this in the song, Lana has been telling us all along that all that glitters isn't gold. So I think this was a really clever quote to pull because the song sounds folksy in a way that brings to mind like a road trip in an RV, but I think it actually has more to do with being a touring musician. She says on the second verse, the thing about being on the road is there's too much time to think about seasons of old. To me, this tells us the impetus for Lana making this album. Lana had a lot of time on the road alone around the US to reflect on her life, which is why she has been so preoccupied with her past on this album. And when she refers to that time as seasons of old, that language doesn't say to me 10 or 15 years ago, that says ages ago, not the old days, but the olden days. So there's this sort of subtle parallel between her idealizing her own past and idealizing a historical past, just like the retro aesthetic of so much of her music, especially this album. So this guy she meets represents this old familiar type of gentleman. He tattoos her name on himself, so he represents permanence. He opens doors for her literally and maybe even in her career, just like the powerful men from White Dress. And Lana seems to question this. She's still caught between these separate worlds of traditionalism and modernity, of wanderlust and stability, of stardom and simplicity. Track number eight is Yosemite. Seasons may change, but we won't change. Isn't it cool how nothing here changes at all? I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like this was produced with some of the sounds that defined her Born to Die production. She's reflecting so much on her past that the sounds of her past even start to creep in into the background. 
And just like she brought back sounds from her past music, she also brings back a lot of the images from the lyrics earlier on this album. First is when she ties back to the last song by saying, seasons may change, but we won't change. On Not All Who Wander Are Lost, she was thinking about seasons of old and how much time had passed, but now she's finding stability in this new love, just like the permanence of the lover's tattoo. And then she says, no more candle in the wind. It's not like I'm invisible, not like before when I was burning at both ends. A candle in the wind represented to Lana the fleeting nature of fame and burning a candle at both ends means being overworked, but still being in the spotlight, unlike the invisibility or anonymity of losing that fame. But Alana finds herself comfortably between these opposites because as she says, we did it for fun, we did it for free. Of course, this is a nod to the Joni Mitchell cover that closes the album, but Lana is telling us that she has struck a balance between fame and anonymity by focusing on her art and on her love, which as usual are the same thing. Because when she's saying we did it for fun, it can refer to making art or being in love. So after spending all this time being caught between opposite feelings and worlds, wanting both stardom and stability, she's finally found that comfortable in-between place where she can embrace all of the multitudes that she contains. Track number nine is Breaking Up Slowly. Breaking up slowly is a hard thing to do. So don't send me flowers like you always do. A very good years for That was sort of on the shorter side for this album, but I think it works because it didn't really have any percussion and it allows her not to dwell on the heartbreak, though we do have two songs left. <laughs> I really like how Lana's vocals balanced with Nikki Lane's because Lana's vocals are very airy and light and sweet often, whereas Nikki's were sort of grittier and had a bit more bite. And on the first verse, Nikki says that she doesn't want to end up like Tammy Wynette, who was a very famous country singer. Nicole Dollinganger has a song called Tammy Faye that also mentions her. And what might be significant about Tammy Wynette here is that she was married to her manager who her kids accused of being responsible for her premature death. So maybe Lana is pointing to the danger of mixing love and work. She also points to this idea on the second verse when she breaks the fourth wall and says, we might be breaking up right after this song. This is meta. She is reminding us that we are listening to a song and in doing so, shattering the illusion. Suddenly, real life and fiction meet in an uncomfortable way, just like her private life and public life meet when she mixes love and art, like maybe if she's dating someone from the music business. Track 10 is Dance Till We Die. I'm covering Johnny and I'm dancing with John. Lord almost burnt down my home. Sometimes this ranch feels like my only friend. We keep it moving, babe. So we made it back in the middle of the night. We don't stop dancing till we die. Clementine's not just a fruit. It's my daughter's joyful name. so good. I feel like with every release, Lana's best impulses just flourish. You know what I mean? Like she just 
taps further and further into what makes her tick, into the musical devices that she likes, into the lyrical devices that she likes, into the production elements that she finds appealing, and just keeps making music that she wants to listen to, and it shows. And what I love about this song is how lyrically Lana sets the catharsis of a breakup in parallel with the catharsis of death and the catharsis of dance. This is the classic cry dancing, Robin dancing on my own model of pop and dance pop that I talk about all the time. Of course, this song is far more country leaning, but it still picks up on those very universal, very cathartic elements because Lana is now freshly single and lonely, and so she fills that void with music and dance, and particularly with folk musicians like Joni Mitchell and Joan Baez. Again, this is art that's about itself. It's a song that tells us how music works and by extension, why Lana makes music for herself and for others. It creates a sense of community and connection. It fills emotional voids. It allows people to escape from reality. I mean, she talks about living a rural life and having a daughter and hanging out with her musical icons. I'm not sure where reality ends and fantasy begins. And that's the point. Why choose one or the other when art allows you to experience both? The final track, track number 11, is For Free, which is a Joni Mitchell cover featuring Zella Day and Wise Blood. I slept last night in a good hotel The wind rushed around in the dirty town Across the street he stood and he played real good For free And that is how the album ends. First of all, love the choice of the cover here. Definitely ties a lot of themes of the album together. I love the humility, actually, of allowing Natalie to end the album. And Alana is returning to a tradition that she sort of started setting up on Ultraviolence and Honeymoon of ending the album with the cover. But here, when she's been talking so much about fact and fiction and about this sort of artistic community, I think this adds a sort of different dimension. The decision to end the album with the cover reminds us that Lana is a performer and more specifically, a member of a community of performers. Because the original song imagines a continuity between Joni and this street performer, a glowing candle and someone anonymous in the dark. To me, this is the greater truth that Lana has been trying to access. She has wanted something big and intangible, and I think what that thing is, is the acknowledgement of the power of art. It makes her feel less lonely. It makes her feel loved. It makes her feel invincible. And this is very much in line with her use of folk music styles on this album because so much of the folk music movements has to do with building communities from the ground up. So by drawing this line from Lana to Zella Day to Wise Blood to Joni Mitchell to this unknown street performer, Lana puts art at the front. If all of their faces and all of their stories blend together into one, all that's left burning white hot forever is the music. Overall, I love this album. I can't wait to listen to it again. I think, first and foremost, lyrically, beyond having some of Lana's most memorable turns of phrase and most complex lyrical ideas, it also very cleverly uses this motif of embracing the in-between to deliver some broader messages. She's always been critical, not just of, I guess, regressive expectations of women and artists and storytellers, but of anyone who tries to say that there is just one right way to be or to act or to express yourself. The arc of the album then is Lana being caught between these opposing poles of identity and facing the pressures of conforming and stripping that away until all that's left is the most important thing to her, the music. 
And speaking of the music, I think my dreams came true here because she made an album that is predominantly folk leaning. I adore folk music. I love the way that Lana blends folk styles with the styles of art pop and even some echoes of the trip hop that she began her career with. I think this album is elegant and complex. It has variety, but still is very cohesive. I think this is one of Lana's strongest albums yet. I don't know for sure where I would rank it compared to her other albums in general. I don't know if I would put it above NFR, but I would certainly say that it is in that same league. As far as favorite tracks go, I think I still lean towards the title track. It is just incredible, but I also love the opener, White Dress, as well as the songs that took some creative risks and that had such beautiful melodies like Not All Who Wander Are Lost and Dark But Just A Game. But like I said, I'd love to hear your favorites in the comments down below and let me know what music I should react to and what other topics you'd like to see me cover on my channel. Don't forget to check the description for that donation link. Please subscribe to be here when I post new videos every week. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you are staying safe and healthy and until next time, that's it, and this is how to disappear.